Hi guys, uh, welcome to my channel. I'm Johnny Chivers, a uh, data engineer by trade, uh, working in the financial services sector during the day. I'm making AWS videos at night because I look nothing better in my spare time than passing on the knowledge that I've built up. In this series of videos, we're going to look at making a data lake on AWS. AWS now offer leak formation that simplifies making a data lake in AWS. But before we begin, what is a data lake? Well, a data lake is just a central repository of structured and unstructured data. Data lakes traditionally separate the storage layer from the compute layer, and this is no different in AWS. S3 makes up the storage layer with its high availability and high redundancy, making it an ideal candidate for a data lake. The compute layer can actually be made up of several different services. These include the likes of EMR, Glue, Lambda. During the series of lessons, we're going to actually build and implement an AWS data lake using multiple services to achieve this, including the latest offering from Lake Formation. So as you can see in the diagram, we're going to start with an ingest sources over here. We're going to pass these into our storage layer, which will be our S3. And then we're going to register these in the Glue data catalog and then do some data analytics with them using the theta. If that doesn't make sense yet, don't worry. By the end of this series of lessons, it totally will. Just a bit of theory before we go any further. Bronze, silver, gold actually represents an architecture pattern in, in data lakes. Bronze traditionally is the data that has been ingested and untouched. Silver sees that some of the data has been through a verification process, possibly a change of format, and is at a better standard in terms of quality. And gold, which is what the business would use on a daily basis to derive meaningful insights into that data. Now, as you can see on the diagram, I've got three S3 buckets. You can use three S3 buckets to separate your bronze, silver and gold layers depending on your security requirements. But to keep the costs cheap and down for the purpose of this lesson, I'm going to use one bucket but separate it into three zones, gold, silver, and bronze. Each one of the data sources that we either create or use within AWS will register in the Glue Data Catalog that acts as our meta store for the information around schemas and that underlying data. Athena is essentially a Presto service that lets us query that data at scale, again, perabytes of scale. We'll first ingest in the batch format using file. We'll do that quite simply through the console. We'll get a bit more complicated where we'll use Kinesis to real-time stream into our bronze area and then transform that data, making it available for the business in the silver and gold areas. And then as an add-on, right at the end, we'll do a relational database where we'll ingest that data. That will be the most expensive part of this course, so I'll do it right at the end because we'll have to create a relational database. We'll then have to put some data into it and then we'll have to in ingest that data. Aside from that, Ignoring the relational database bit, in practice, this has cost me a few dollars. It's a few dollars worth spending to learn how to use these services because they'll see you in good stead throughout your career. The lessons themselves. Lesson one will be the theory behind Lake Formation and AWS. It'll be a quick tour of the console using Lake Formation. We'll then create an S3 bucket and register it as our data lake. Lesson two, we'll be doing a batch ingest using a file that I'll provide of data. We'll then register that data as a table using AWS Glue, um, creating a crawler to infer the schema of that, registering that in the database that we create. Off the basis of that lesson three, we'll look at Lake Formation for controlling access to that data and then Athena for querying. We'll actually create a user at this point and then get into some real life situations with a data analyst and how they might interact with that data. Lesson four will be a wee bit more complicated. In lesson four, we'll actually look at doing real-time ingest using Kinesis and the Kinesis data generator, which I've used in previous lessons. So if you need a refresher, I'll put a link in the top corner of that video. If not, we'll cover some of the stuff again in that lesson and we'll get some real-time data streaming in their lake and then we'll analyze that data. Lesson five, we'll apply a bit of Glue ETL. This will be a very light touch of Glue ETL. I'll do another video series on Glue itself, the Glue Studio, and we'll work through more use cases with Glue. But to get us going, lesson five, we'll use Glue to transform the raw data that we've ingested into a more usable data lake format like Parquet. Again, if you're not familiar with these columnar formats like Parquet or Orc format, we'll touch on these as we go through the lessons themselves. So don't worry if you don't understand now, 
by the end of this series, you will. Lesson six as it currently stands will be the bonus lesson. We'll, we'll create a relational data source, we'll put some data into that data source and then we'll ingest it into our AWS lead. That will be a bit involved and a bit more costly. Again, I'll provide the scripts and the data for this lesson. We do have other videos on this channel by creating AWS RDS DB instances. It would be useful to go look at that before you attempt lesson six. However, it won't be an essential because I'll run through everything at a slightly higher speed as we go, but we'll get some relational data pumping into our AWS data lake. Okay, so that's the introduction lesson over. Let's get into lesson one. Let's cover a bit of theory off and then let's start making our AWS data lake.